Panther Nation, what's good? Today we're going to talk about the Super Bowl window. You are now tuned into the Panther Nation podcast. DeLone fires to an open Smith. Steve oh. Smith is going to go all the way. No flag down. Okay, guys, so you guys hear me talk about the Super Bowl window all the time on uh, on Mondays. And I just want to be clear and kind of visualize it for you so that it makes sense. There's certain decisions that have to be made as far as, uh, and it's, it's all centered around the quarterback, right? The quarterback is the most expensive person on your team, nine times out of ten, unless you draft one. And that's what we're going to take a look at. Drafting a quarterback versus uh Resigning Teddy Bridgewater. What what impact does that do? Uh, what what impact does that have moving forward? And when should you uh, make that decision? Now we it's already built in for us. We have to make a decision at a certain point in time. We can draft a quarterback in 2021. We can draft a quarterback in 2022. And at 2022, we have to uh, figure out whether we're going to resign Teddy. So we have about uh, almost two years, or including this year, we have two years left to make a decision. Um, and if we're going to draft the quarterback, obviously we have to make that uh, decision much quicker this year. That being said, let's get to the visualization so you can see. Okay, Panther Nation. So as you can see, this is a representation of what happens if we draft a quarterback in the 2021 draft. Okay. Um, again, uh, people like to throw this thing out there. Yeah, let's get us a quarterback. Uh, let's go, you know, draft the quarterback in 2021, see what happens again. It's there is several ways again. I keep saying this, there's several ways to accomplish what we're trying to do. It's just that we need to take our time and, and and take a look at this thing holistically. And this is a visual representation. Hopefully, this this visual rep, visual representation helps you to kind of see what is a, a better option. And I'm not advocating one over the other. I'm just pointing out the differences between um, uh, these different options. Okay. And again, we're focusing on the quarterback position because it's really important. Uh, again. It's probably the most important uh, uh, person, individual player on the field, and that's why we're focusing on that. But there's so many other factors that go into this. But for right now, we're focusing on the quarterback while we continue to build the holistic view uh, while we go through this uh, this roster build session. Okay, so again, we're identifying the, the the Super Bowl window. As you can see, I got several of icons on the screen, and we'll go through them, and I'll show you what I'm what I'm trying to accomplish here. So right now, as you can see, in 2020. Um, where the Matt Rule era has begun, and uh, we're we're off to the races. You know we've gotten off to a pretty decent start here. Um, we're three and five as we speak, uh, going to play the Chiefs. Uh, and listen, um, I don't expect us to. Uh, this is you know we we couldn't ask to to see um, to be uh, in a better situation. We're competitive in these games. We've been in position to to win a lot of these games. We're just trying to figure it out. And a lot of things come along with, with being a new head coach new staff especially coming from college a lot of these things are kind of warranted and so it's okay but we're i feel confident about where, where we're heading in the direction that we're heading okay and that's what's most important and most important so 2020 that's where we are in 2021 uh we're continuing to build right and at the at the end of this season we have a decision to make we hit the 2021 draft i'm assuming that we're going to be picking in the range of 10 to 15 Okay, that's we're gonna end up with like a six and ten record, something to that effect. Obviously, the the better the record, the the worse our draft position, or the worse the record, the better our draft position. Um, so uh, again, so we just keep that in mind as the, as the season come, goes along. We'll be tracking the draft order as it uh, as it continues to play out. But right now, I'm assuming that we're going to pick ten to fifteen. That's why Trey Lance is on the photo there. I don't think he's going to be there. I personally think he's going to go between five and ten. Um, but insert any quarterback there, and this kind of just paints the picture. Now, there is a scenario. Obviously, you don't see Justin Fields or Trevor Lawrence there, but there is a scenario where we could trade up to go get a Justin Fields or um, or a, a Trevor Lawrence. Obviously, it would cost us a lot of future draft capital and current draft capital. So I don't think that's a great idea, especially when you're in the midst of rebuilding. Our roster is not perfect. 
It's not perfect in any means. We can't afford to take those kind of chances, um, especially when we're, um, you know, we're, you know, in the midst of a rebuild. So, to, excuse me, 2021. I'm assuming we let the, the draft fall to us. We pick up a quarterback, all right. And at the end of at the end of 21, 2021, you can see that by the end of 2021, they might not all leave at the same time. But at the end of the 2021, 2022 season, you should see Drew Brees, um, Tom Brady, and Matt Ryan out of the NFC South. That opens up the window for us to to at least make the playoffs. And that's the first step to, to a Super Bowl, right, is making the playoffs. So if you can sneak into the playoffs, that opens up the window. And that's where we, you know, at the end of 2022, that could be where we are. All those guys should be going. All right, so let's say we draft the quarterback in 2021. He sits under Teddy Bridgewater. And, uh, you know, he sits that season out. That would mean we would not extend Teddy Bridgewater. And we would, in 2022, we would meet, move on from, from Teddy Bridgewater. So that means we're right here. We're right here in our window. That's when the window really begins. As soon as uh, our quarterback becomes a starter, that's when the Super, Super Bowl window opens. Okay? That's when the Super Bowl window opens. Now, the window is open, but that doesn't necessarily mean we're going to be successful. That just means our window is open. That means when you, you need to start taking a little bit more risk. You need to start building your team up and filling those gaps a little bit more aggressively. Right now, you can see in 2020, we're not as aggressive. We're not making any trades. We're not making any huge free agent picks. That's okay. When you're under construction, you can, you're can you slow building. You're building up the offensive line. You're building up the, the defense. You're, you're, you, it's take, it takes time, okay? And in 2022... That's when the window opens, you need to start getting a little bit more aggressive, okay? So we're in 2022. We're probably quite not there yet. We're probably maybe a, a, a wild card playoff team. Maybe we win the division. Who knows? But I don't think we'll be in Super Bowl contention. Now, come 2023, that's when we need to be pushing. We need to start really making that push. 2023, 2024, you want to get that Super Bowl or in that, you want to get in the Super Bowl while this rookie, this rookie quarterback, is on the uh, on their rookie contract, and that's really these two two these three years. So we sat in 2021. He's playing 2022. He's playing 2023. He's playing 2024. These are the years. These two years, 2023, 2024, is the years that we really need to make the push. Now, come 2025, we could extend that window um, with the the, uh, the fifth year option. If we extend the fifth year option for our quarterback, obviously, we, if if it's all, all working out. Then sure, we would do that, no problem. Um, and you can drop this this cap figure because again, the fifth year option is nothing but a tool that gives you more time to negotiate a long term deal. Because the fifth year option is not a cheap deal. You you have to pay a guy um, a guaranteed salary of the average of the top, uh, I think ten five or ten um, salaries in that position. And we all know quarterbacks are getting paid thirty forty million dollars. $40 million a year. And at this at this point, 2025, that could be upwards of $50, $60 million a year. Okay? So you're going to be paying a lot for this quarterback in the fifth-year option year. The goal would be to negotiate that long-term salary, drop that number lower, and then the window it, it potentially could uh, be uh, extended a little bit further. Now, we I should probably should have added a couple more windows here. But this is in the it, this is also in the context of Matt Rule's uh, contract. Okay, he has a seven year contract, twenty twenty one through twenty twenty seven. That's when his contract expires. So, obviously, if the quarterback is performing well, you want to extend him. But the ideal goal would be to win the Super Bowl in twenty twenty three or twenty twenty four. That way, you you would have money to you have money freed up to go and spend on other players outside of the quarterback position and we know the quarterback position could be expensive when you have that money freed up it does allow you to um play around with the uh with the salaries a little bit and get more people okay but that this is what 2021 looks like again you shorten the window a little bit by drafting the quarterback next year especially if he's going to sit you, the window shortens a little bit that's why i'm opposed to this and i'm opposed to drafting up also in the draft because we need all those picks OK, so that I'm opposed to this. But it, again, if given the options, I'm opposed to it. Not to say it's a really it's not a bad option. I just think we need to buy ourselves a little bit more time in the rebuild. That's just my personal opinion. All right, folks. So now we're, we're back um, and we're back looking at 2022, 2022. Uh, this is the scenario where we wait. We don't draft the quarterback in this year. Uh, in this coming upcoming draft, we wait until 2022 to draft the quarterback and this is kind of what the scenario looks like. So we've already discussed what happens in 2020. Um, we, you know, we're going to end up picking top 15, maybe. 
Um, and then we'll, hopefully we look to improve the roster. We have another solid draft, or hopefully we add some some offensive line help. That would be the the, the most likely scenario that I, I hope we do. Um, and again, at the end of 2020, 20, at the end of the 2021 season, we still have Drew Brees, Tom Brady, and Matt Ryan leaving. Hopefully. Uh, and then that opens up the window once again. But the Panthers in this scenario would still have Teddy Bridgewater. We would still have Teddy Bridgewater uh, going into 2022. We we pick up that option. He's guaranteed 26 million that year, or uh, not guaranteed, but his his salary cap hit is 20 26 million. Um, and our newly drafted quarterback that we picked up in the off season um, in 2022 is who we, we would have him sit. We would have him sit behind t- Teddy Bridgewater. And we let Teddy Bridgewater play out his contract. Okay, so then at the end of 2022, we would have to figure out what we're gonna do. Whether we're gonna play the new draft pick or we're gonna, you know, uh, extend Teddy. So in this scenario, we're assuming that Teddy Bridgewater is. We're gonna move on from Teddy Bridgewater, and we're gonna allow our quarterback um, to uh, to go ahead and play in 2023. Again, 2023. Hopefully. In this scenario, you have more time to build, right? So in 2021, you rebuilt the offensive line. In 2022, draft you draft the quarterback, and hopefully you continue to rebuild the offensive line and then add some more pieces on the defense. You know, we still need to add a middle linebacker. We still need to add some corner help. Uh, we still need to add some uh, defensive tackle help. Um, so we hopefully in this scenario, we're still drafting very well. We have another Jeremy Chen. We have another Derek Brown type guys as far as uh, production. Uh, we need those guys to, uh, to, to, to produce whoever we draft. If this rebuild is going to go the way it's supposed to go in order in, to put us on a trajectory to win a Super Bowl, you have to knock the draft picks out of the park. So I'm assuming that, th- that we're doing that in 2021 and in 2022. Okay. So now in 2023, your your uh, the quarterback that you drafted in 2022 is starting. Okay, your, that quarterback is starting, and the window opens. The window is now open, and now at this point you have enough draft talent, uh, and now at this point you're, you're taking more risks. You're, you're you're able to go out. You make trades. You're trying to figure it out because listen, um, you need to in this scenario you need 2022, 2023, and it. I would say again in 2024, 2025, you need to be knocking on the door. You need to be making NFC Championship games. You need to be winning the NFC, going to the Super Bowl, winning the Super Bowl type scenarios. Okay, so you need to do that again. From from a Matt Rule perspective, it opens his window up a little bit longer. You have a little bit longer here um, to to figure it out. And then by 2027, you know your your contract is over, and and hopefully if things are going right, you're extended. If not. Your things are going bad and you left and this thing is a mess okay so we're gonna pretend like everything is going this is hunky dory uh you know rainbows and fairies type situation here okay and then in, if this is rainbows and fairies type situation we would have a super bowl by 2024 or 2025 and then in uh in 2026 we will pick up our quarterback's fifth year option and we would extend him and then the, the window would extend from there there was a lot of things that would have to happen. Again, you would extend Matt Rule, you would extend your quarterback, and then you you know you hopefully you still have your coordinators there, and the the window will extend continue to extend. Okay, that's the that's the hope for uh, 2022. That's what happens if you draft a quarterback in 2022. All right, moving on. Okay, this is the scenario that I like personally. Again, I'm not partial. Uh, or I'm not um, really knocking on the door for any any particular situation because it's early. We're eight week, weeks into the Matt Rule era. It's very early. Things could change, uh, and a lot could happen between you know this year and next year. So as of right now, um, the way Teddy Bridgewater is playing, I like the way Teddy Bridgewater is playing, um, and I, I I wouldn't mind extending Teddy Bridgewater. I think he is a he is a safe bet. Okay, he's a safe bet, and the quarterback is the most important position on the field. Uh, yes, you can take a risk. You can draft a quarterback in 2021. Uh, but again, my posi- my position is that if you're not getting a generational talent like Justin Fields or um, or, or uh, Trevor Lawrence, then there's no point in drafting a quarterback uh, to me. Uh, there's no point in drafting a quarterback if you're not getting one of those two guys. And there's no point. And again, you're not going to risk the rest of your draft or your future drafts because you're still rebuilding to go get that guy. Uh, if you do that, um, then you're, you're sacrificing the talent that you could put around that quarterback. And you're sacrificing um, a lot of draft capital that you could use to build your team. 
I'm just not in agreement with that. If we were a little, maybe if we were knocking on the door of a playoff run or a a uh, a Super Bowl run, and we just needed that quarterback to take us over the top, I would do it absolutely, no problem. I just think we have a ways to go on the defensive side, so that's why I'm not I'm not um, in agreement with drafting a quarterback in 2021 in the first round. Okay, maybe we draft one in in the later rounds, but that's that's a whole nother scenario. Um, it, but the Okay, it's not a whole other scenario, but the same thing applies as far as drafting a quarterback in 2021. That, that as far as what happens with Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater. Now, but this is this is if we happen to re-sign Teddy Bridgewater. Okay, again, we know Teddy Bridgewater is under contract through uh, 2023, um, but we have to make a decision at the end of the 2022 season on um, whether to extend him or not. Now, there's a couple positives that happen with having Teddy Bridgewater around uh, this long. Okay, he would be at this point, if these if these three guys are gone, if Te- uh, Drew Brees, Tom, Tom Brady, and Matt Ryan are gone, Teddy Bridgewater would be the most experienced quarterback in the NFC South at that point. He would be the tenured quarterback in the NFC South. He would know the division like the back of his hand. And there's 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 bonuses that come with that. You see you've seen the defenses. You know how it works. There's no having no having to reteach a uh, a, a quarterback to to figure it out because again you lose. In the rebuild, you're gonna lose a year or two in t- trying to warm uh, to to get that quarterback ready. You're gonna lose a year. You're sitting him behind Teddy Bridgewater one, and then you're probably gonna lose another year with teaching him the system. Okay, you're gonna you're gonna lose a couple of years. Okay, so in my opinion, in my opinion, this is the best way to move forward with the Panthers. Okay, you now there is a downside to this. There is a downside to this right now. Teddy Bridgewater is. Uh, is 28 years old okay in 2020 he's 28 years old 2021 2022 when we have to make the decision he's going to be 30 years old now we know quarterbacks can play a long time uh look at tom brady uh look if you look at teddy bridgewater's quarterback quarterback style he's not taking a ton of hits he's a smart quarterback i think that teddy could play well into his 30s but this is something you need to consider it's something you need to consider. How long are you going to extend Teddy? If you give him a five-year deal, he'll play up until he's 35. Um, the longer you sign, the more you're able to lower that cap hit by uh, by um, you know spreading the 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 the, uh, the guaranteed money across the contract. We'll talk about that later. But just know that the longer deal you sign him to, the more you're able to lower his cap hit. Okay. So that being said, that being said, this is the best scenario for the Panthers. Reason why I'm putting putting my money to where my mouth is here. Okay. 2021, we focus on building the offensive line. You need to focus on building the offensive line to protect Teddy. We know it's not it right now. And I talked about it in the previous slide that we've got work to do on the offensive line. You build the offensive line. You build the defense in 2021 and in 2022. Those two years, you build up, you build up. And in 2022, you have a decision to make. Boom, I've already made a decision. We're going to re-sign Teddy Bridgewater. At this moment, your window is open, okay? 2023 you're in we with teddy bridgewater at the quarterback with a solid defense and a rebuilt offensive line we could be in super bowl contention in 2023 it's a possibility there's no there's no having to reteach the offense the offense is a known entity the defense is going to be we're going to be five four three four years into the defense things are going to start to gel we're going to the super bowl window is going to be open here not only is it open, it stays open because you're going to extend Teddy Bridgewater five something years. It stays open. It stays open. The only issue with this, now the only issues with this, yes, you're going to have a lot of money tied up with Teddy Bridgewater. But if you're drafting well, that does not matter because you're not having to pay folks while they're on their rookie deal. That's the thing. That's the thing. You can pay a quarterback. There's nothing wrong with paying a quarterback. The only problem with paying a quarterback is you also have to continue to draft well. Look at the Saints. The Saints are paying Drew Brees $20 million, $30 million a year. But because they have a Malcolm Jenkins, because they have Alvin Kamara, because they drafted Michael Thomas, because they uh, Andres Pete, all these guys they drafted were on rookie deals. They were on rookie deals. That, that's why their window is extended. You extend the window by surrounding your quarterback with young draft talent. That's how it's done. Look how look how long our window is open. These are legit Super Bowl playoff runs in 2021 through 2017. These are legit. There's no having to, uh, you know, get the quarterback up to speed. There's none of that. The quarterback is Taylor Bridgewater. Now you can focus on bringing up the pieces that um, that 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 can help Teddy Bridgewater 
get us to a Super Bowl and win it. Now, yes, you're going to have to focus. You're going to have to get the defense ready. You're going to have to put a good defense behind them. Uh, and you're going to have to put a good offensive line in front of them and keep the weapons that we have. We have to keep uh, Robbie Anderson. Robbie Anderson would be aging now. He would be aging in these uh, in this scenario, he'd be in his 30s at this point. But you have to get more weapons. You have to continue to get more weapons. You cannot be, um, you can't be uh, shy when it comes to getting more weapons for Teddy. You have to keep him surrounded with good draft talent, good draft talent. Just like we drafted this year, we're letting guys play, and that's the key um, to resign on Teddy Bridgewater. Okay, Panther Nation. Now you've seen the what the window means. You've seen the Super Bowl window, how it opens how long it stays open and now it all makes sense now we have the the uh we have the structure in place to build around now okay so now when we go to look at who to resign who not to resign where to recoup our money from we can actually see how that affects uh the window moving forward you can also in our spreadsheet we'll be able to see whose contracts are expiring during the window who we need to keep who we need to let go uh we can also see uh, who's coming up for extensions? Um, some some of the free agents that we have. You can see some of some of the draft picks. How old these guys will be during the window? Because that's key too, and that's the key to building a young. That's why we're building such a young team. Because we know, to, in order to keep that window open, you have to be young. You have to be. You don't have to be young, but it's good to be young. Start young, so you can grow old together. That's the biggest thing. Okay, and the biggest thing to this, no matter which. No matter which option you pick, whether you want to draft a quarterback this year, next year, or re-sign Teddy Bridgewater, you have to draft well. That's the key. We got a good start with Jeremy Chin, Derrick Brown. The good start. That's a good start. We need to keep that same energy in 2021 and continue to build. If we do that, we'll be fine. We've got to address some of these gaps. The offensive line, the middle linebacker position, the secondary we've got to address it we've got to address it and hit it hard pause you got to hit it hard and, and get it right okay that being said now we have this in place next time i see you we'll be really able to dive into some numbers and really start to uh to build this thing okay that being said like subscribe peace out keep pounding i'm gone